All right. This is it. Day six. We got today. Yeehaw! Yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> we have today and tomorrow. So day four, we got the white food challenge. Hopefully you journaled it. Hopefully you understand what white food, refined food, processed foods, unliving foods, zombie foods do to you. And sure, you know, it was just one day, but take that, you know, once you're done the seven day challenge and try it for three or four or five days. We are just introducing ways for you to be aware of what's going on. Once you're aware of what's going on, you can do something about it. If you're unaware, you can't do anything about it. So that was the white food challenge. We wanted to get rid of the poisons that you've been eating. You know, you eat a bunch of poison and you wonder why you're not feeling good. Hello. Day five, yesterday, was the gluten challenge, which really was about taking out the worst starch. And hopefully you've got a little bit of an idea of what that was like. And today is what we call the Mevi challenge. In other words, we're pretty much going to remove all the starches for the day and see what happens. So, Martin, let's uh, delve into this in a little more detail. Lately, the Mevi, which is meat, eggs, vegetables, and yogurt has been also known as the paleo or at least the paleo flag is very similar to what 25 or 30 years ago we used to call the Mevi diet. What we're trying to show you is this. It is very possible that your body in its current state is cross-reacting, cross-reactive to almost all starches. Definitely to sugar, but probably also rice, potatoes, and uh, oh, definitely the flour. Well, we removed it yesterday. So the allowed foods are a salad with a piece of meat, whether it's a fish or chicken or steak. We would prefer if you found something organic, grass-fed, range-raised, natural, definitely try and support the farmers that take good care of the animals because the the uh, factory meat is nowhere near as good. Once you have eaten the good stuff for a while, you'll know. And it's better, by far better, to eat a smaller serving of the good stuff than a large serving of the industrial food. So you can have the vegetables either as a salad, raw, or lightly steamed, or lightly stir-fried. And by lightly, like if, if, you've, if you've watched broccoli go from the opaque green color to this brilliant emerald, that's about the time it requires. Or carrot goes from uh, solid orange to translucent or onion goes from solid white to glassy. Those are the temperature gradu gradation to take it from, um, well, anyway, to, to the point of doneness that's healthy. If you keep cooking it, like if you keep cooking the onion until it's just completely caramelized, you have killed most of the nutrients out of it. All you're left with is with caramelized sugars. Um, so that's the amount of cooking we want. Maybe we could start and describe a fun uh, salad roll. Should I try, Scott? What do you Yes. Think? Go ahead. All right. So people wonder, well, how am I going to have a sandwich? Right? Like You can't have a sandwich. There's no bread. There's no anything. We're so used to have some kind of a flat bread, stuffed bread, fluff bread, whatever bread. That's the staple of our snacks or in-between meals. So here goes. Get a head of romaine lettuce, large leaves. They, the large ones, they're usually about yay big, right? Like something like this. Anyway, so get a leaf of romaine, lay it flat. Put your condiment on it. Mayo is not the best thing, but you can use some or sprinkle it with some olive oil and some salt, maybe some mustard, whatever you want. And then lay on it a slice of something I would use a roasted turkey breast, but whatever you are willing with, uh, willing to go with some kind of a cold cut, preferably healthy like that. And then you can shred some carrot on, 
carrot on top and put some maybe green onion or whatever else you want. Anyway, it's all layered. Take it, roll it. Da -da -da. Of course, not like this, but before you know it, there's your romaine leaf ready to be eaten. That's your sandwich, salad roll. Carb free. Delicious. And it's carb free. Carb free. Well, and actually, it can be a really good dinner or snack or whatever, because I actually was at a restaurant and they had an appetizer, and what they brought out was a whole bunch of leaf lettuce, and they had a stir fry of uh, of some meat and green peppers and all the rest of it, and you just took the the meat, and you put it on the on the leaf, and you wrapped it up a little bit, ate it, and it was delicious. And what we're talking about here is developing some new habits. We want to do it in a day because we feel like, hey, you know, when we think about it, I can do this for a day. And some of these things are really difficult even to do for a day, but it's a start. And after you've done it for a day, then you can say, well, maybe I should try doing this for another day. You know, there's been a few people that have contacted us and said, you know what, I got rid of the white food and I actually felt a little bit better, so, you know, I'm continuing to keep the white food out. I'm taking that challenge and I'm moving forward with it and each day I'm feeling better and better and better. So you know, we're doing this seven day challenge, we're actually really trying to trick you into changing your lifestyle but we're just doing it one day at a time. So you get rid of the white food, you get rid of some of the gluten, now we're going to get rid of a lot of the gluten, I'm not saying you want to do that for the rest of your life, but who knows, if all of a sudden you're feeling good and you're feeling healthy, great. One of the things Martin talks a lot about is metabolic typing. So if 20 years ago I met a lady who was about 45 or 50, I knew her daughter and she was a vegetarian and she looked about as sick as you could look without being, you know, bedridden. She her her face was drawn, her skin was awful, she was very thin, like too thin. Her eyes were red. I mean, she was, oh, I'm acidic like crazy. I didn't know at the time, right? But she was eating a diet, I think, now that was totally going against. Like, So her mind was forcing her to go totally against what her body wanted, which, of course, is never a way to be healthy. And she wasn't. I mean, her daughter would say to me, like, my mom, she does all this stuff trying to be healthy, and she's the sickest person that I know. So... As you're doing these things, what we think is, is that everybody in our society pretty much has already been doing things that is against their body. We've been putting white poisons into our body. We've been putting stuff that's been, uh, you know, has round up into the, into the molecules of it. So that's just going to harm us. We've, we've got all this gluten that we shouldn't be having. Everything is kind of unnatural. It's all cooked, so there's no enzymes, blah, 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 blah. And what would happen if all of a sudden you were eating right for your body? And we don't know what that is. You do if you're paying attention. And that's the whole point of doing this, what we call the MEVI diet. We're looking at protein, so meats and eggs and vegetables and yogurt, those sort of things. What happens when you don't have the white rice, you don't have the white pasta? Oh, you're addicted to it. You're going to want it. There's no doubt about that. Try to go a day without sugar. I have. It's hard because it's just as addictive as heroin, as I said a couple days ago. But once you become aware, once you start taking those steps, and once you see like, oh my goodness, this is making a difference in my life, you can continue on. And that's part of what this seven day challenge is, is we're giving you stuff for each day, but a number of you are, are taking the challenge beyond the day, which we're really, really proud of. It's great. Now I should probably do a little explanation on the, on the why, the yogurt. It's, it's from the dairy group. Originally, dairy was not really part of our diet. It became available with agriculture, um, and we used to only have raw milk. Then the industrial agriculture in introduced pasteurization. Not such a bad thing because it prevents infections. However, it turns the available proteins into coagulated proteins. You, your body cannot properly digest it. And then came the last change, and that's the homogenization. What they do actually is they force the milk through a very fine, porous 
like a like a sieve of some sort under high pressure, causing the fat globules to disperse. Instead of being whatever size they would be naturally, they become smaller. Anyway, it the milk becomes beautifully homogeneous. Homogeneous would be the word, and uh, it lasts longer. It doesn't spoil for days. I don't know if you've ever tried to uh, take raw milk without industrial processing. It doesn't last overnight. It goes off. You either have to clobber it. That's a clabbered. That's a process by which it becomes sour. Or you have to allow it to turn itself into either a yogurt or kefir using a uh, enzyme and bacteria rich culture that's going to process all of the sugars from it and turn it into a cheese-like, natural soft cheese-like um, food. So if you, if you... Uh, so we've got into the yogurt, that's what you were talking about. Yeah, we're into the yogurt, we're into the dairy. The point is, yes, it's okay to take raw milk if that's what you want and if that's what you can access. But there are many states that don't even allow you to purchase raw milk. And uh, anyway, if you want to eat dairy products, the only ones that are safe to eat in this particular diet is the ones that have been fully processed by uh, fermentation, which would be either yogurt or kefir. Okay. And you want this what, what it does, it takes the lactose, which is the sugar in milk, and it completely processes it and turns it into, I forget what it is, something sour, um, <laughs> lactic acid. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's your yogurt, which will not harm you. The reason we don't recommend aged cheese is because it raises the histamine level. And histamine is the reaction that your body is using to signal that it's very unhappy. It's the allergic signaling molecule. So we don't want to raise the signaling level in your body. That's why aged cheese is probably off limit. One other thing, if you do have histamine challenge, you will also react badly to aged meats. So that would be the salami and the sausage and that sort of thing, but also possibly the meat that has been first butchered and then hung in a cold room to age. So you may need to be asking your butcher to make sure that what you get has been freshly uh, slaughtered and then immediately to you or frozen immediately without the 10 days of aging, which is common. Wow. Yeah, and I've... As I said before, I spent 20 years in the grocery industry, and we always talked about how important it was to have the meat aged. Mm. Yes, it tastes better. It falls off the bone. It's wonderful. But people who have a histamine challenge don't do well with it at all. Okay, so let's talk about can we have fruit? Can we have well, obviously no starches? What about beans? And no. Talked about cheese and I want no. rice. It's a, it's a no, 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 no. <laughs> meat? Egg, vegetable, yogurt. Okay. Really narrow. Like we are trying to take you, first we threw away the toxic stuff, the poisonous. Then we threw away the gluten, the bad protein that's in grain. Now we're throwing away all the starches to see what happens with you. Well, not all the starches, I should say. There are starches in vegetables, just yes. not as much as in rice or potato. There's also we're narrowing. Right? Sugars in vegetables? Yeah, there are some sugars in vegetables, like carrot, for instance, is quite sugary. So don't go drinking 16 ounces of carrot juice because that's that's like candy, really. Darn, you're taking all the good stuff away. Yeah, sorry, no sweets. This is a challenge. This is not meant to be a uh, easy. Right. So... Anyway, do a day, of, day or more of it. You may need to do three weeks of it. This is the diet that's used for killing off fungus or yeast or candida, which is one of those. If you have fungus overgrowth, you may need to do, do 20 days of this before it dies down completely. Hmm. Okay, cool. 
below you can leave your comments don't forget to journal so throughout the day how are you feeling in the morning how are you feeling in the afternoon how are you feeling in the evening I had something I had some vegetables and eggs I had an omelet without cheese <laughs> <laughs> You know, a little bit of vegetables in it, that sort of stuff, some carrots, some onions. Uh, how did you feel an hour later, two hours later, three hours later? You want to be journaling all that stuff so that you've got an idea of what impact this is having on how you feel. Oh, I'm not as achy today as I was, or I'm, boy, I'm not feeling really good at all. Am I more acidic? Am I, like, growing, going off the wall? Am I more alkaline? I'm just like, everything's cool, everything's fine, you know? Check all those things out because that's what uh, this whole process is about. Leave your comments below because it's really important. Sharing what's going on with you helps other people. There's no doubt about that. Martin, if somebody is like going, I really need some extra help or I need some extra coaching on this, I don't really maybe understand exactly what uh, Scott and Martin are talking about, uh, what are some of their options? Well, call. Call for help. It's 866-543-3388. We'll try and support you best we can. Um, on the life-enthusiast.com, our home website, there's also a chat tool that you can chat type with us. If we're not recording, we're, we're there <laughs> talking to people. Wonderful. All right. One more day to go. Tomorrow's the seventh day. Congratulations. You are almost succeeded in doing the seven-day challenge. We really appreciate the feedback that you've been giving us. And uh, keep giving us that feedback. Let us know how you're doing. Share and support one another. And we'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow is the self-awareness challenge. So good luck with the MEVI today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.